Welcome back to my introduction to Rust series. This is Raimu, and in this video, I'm going to be covering functions and modules. Essentially, what we're going to start off with for part two is where we left off on part one. So we'll do a cargo new part two this time. CD to part two, open that folder. Now we're back to where we were at the end of part one. So in this part, we're going to cover functions. We're going to dive into the syntax. This may be a little bit simple, but in case you haven't programmed at all before, this might be useful. So what is a function? A function is a series of instructions that the computer is told to execute. Sometimes it can have a name, sometimes it can not have a name. In this case, we have a function marked by the FN keyword in Rust. It has a name called main. The instructions that the function executes are within these curly braces and essentially when we run this program cargo run it does what you would expect this line not even knowing the syntax but just intuitively when it says printlin print line hello world it's printing hello world main is a special name in rust when you make a binary crate as i described in the last video the program has to call an outermost function to execute the program. That outermost function generally has a special name called main. Main is also the name of the file that the main function can be found in. So a program with just one function is not very interesting. Let's add another function. First, we need to have our program do more than one thing. So in addition to printing hello world, let's have it print something else like goodbye. Now, hitting save on that, cargo run. Great. Now, what if we wanted to split this code up into two functions? We could simply, in Rust, define another function. Say, goodbye. That looks pretty much like main, only we're going to move this line that says goodbye into the function say goodbye. Now, if we were to run this now, we would get a couple problems, right? It's only printing hello world. And also the compiler has conveniently told us that we never used our function goodbye. This is one thing you'll learn about Rust as you go. The compiler warnings and errors are actually pretty good. Give you a good hint about what you might be doing wrong. So what we really want is after printing hello world to have it say goodbye or print goodbye, right? So the way we do this is a function call. You simply take the name of the function and put it where you want the function to be called. Now, technically, calling a function is telling the computer to put on hold, or what they call the stack, what we're doing in the current function, and jump over to this other function, execute it, and then when we complete that, go back to where we did that call, and then proceed. So if we had another statement after say goodbye, it would happen after goodbye is printed. So when we run this, does what we expect, right? Now, a little bit of an aside to improve our environment. Let's say I had an error in the program. Let's say I forgot to put that brace there. The editor doesn't give us any clue that we did anything wrong. But if I run cargo run, we got all sorts of things in, that are now in red, which means that's an error. Unclosed delimiter and expected zero arguments. All this stuff, the, it's confused, basically. So how do we improve our workflow so that we could see this error before we actually tried to run the program. What my suggestion is, is, is to ins extend your text editor with an extension that knows about Rust. Personally, I like Rust Analyzer. So I'm going to install that right now. It's downloading the language server. You can see it added a bar at the bottom. And I close this. Now, go back to that. We see a red squiggly line, and if we hover over it, it tells us what we did wrong, sometimes. Other times, it just gets confused. But in general, whenever you see a red squiggly line, that's where you want to focus and take a second look and say, oh, I forgot that parentheses there. By the way, I'll go into more detail about what these parentheses mean in a subsequent video, but we're taking this again, one step at a time. I don't want to throw too many things at you at once. So Rust Analyzer installed now, we get a better programming experience, right? When we make mistakes, we get immediate feedback before we even try to run the program. Okay. 
I've shown how to divide code into different functions. This is a technique to kind of keep your code easy to organize. If you have too much code in one function, it tends to get really unwieldy. It gets hard to understand if you look at it later after you haven't looked at it for a while. Or if new people look at your function, if there's too much done in that one function, it'd be hard to understand, right? So generally you want to break up your code more along the lines of if you're doing one thing and then you're doing another thing, you might have two different functions for that. Now, as you proceed and you're starting to write lots and lots of functions, you might think, there are too many functions. How do I organize this mess? The answer in Rust is modules. So modules are a way to group your functions and separate them to, for better organization. There are two levels of organization with modules in Rust. We'll go over the very first one, which is just grouping functions into different modules. So the way you do this is, let's say we wanted the say goodbye to be in a separate module from the main program. We would just say mod. We'll call it something like printing, I guess. Hit save. And in front of say goodbye, we'll say printing colon colon. And because it is a now a private function, I'll explain this in a second, we had to put pub in front. Okay, cargo run, and it still works. Although sometimes, yeah, sometimes it uh, doesn't show that last line, but that's okay. So let me explain what I just did. We, in, we took this say goodbye function and we encapsulated it into a module come printing. Again, a module is sort of like a grouping. So we didn't actually change any code. We just kind of reorganized it. Now, once we put it into this module, from the main program's perspective, this is all it sees. That's why I had to say, to find say goodbye, you have to look into printing. There's the th third thing I had to do, which is add this pub in front. That's because by default, anything inside of a module doesn't get seen outside. It's, it's private. And that helps an organization so that you don't accidentally have functions from different modules calling each other willy-nilly and no rules. So this establishes sort of like, what is the contract? What, what are the things that should be visible from the outside world looking into this printing module? So by putting pub in front, you're basically saying say goodbye is a public function. It's callable or visible outside of the module. Now I'm gonna do another aside right now because as you're developing in Rust, you're going to find yourself spending a lot of time doing things like this, where like I would say I want to indent that because this is a block and so this should be indented. So there's actually a built-in formatter that comes with Rust called Rust FMT. We already have it, we just haven't set it up. So there are basically two steps to the setup and feel free to skip this part if you're okay reformatting your code yourself. But I, I like the automatic reformatting. So one thing is I'm going to hit F1 to go to the command palette and just type in settings, find where it says open settings JSON. This part of Visual Studio Code configuration says for files that are identified as the Rust language, we want the editor to format whenever we save. Now the formatter that's going to pick is provided by Rust Analyzer, which we just installed a few minutes ago. I should test this and see if it formats when I hit save. There we go. Isn't that kind of cool? So if you were to say, add some extra spaces here or here, and maybe indented that wrong, when the moment you hit save, boom, automatically fixed for you. Isn't that cool? Okay, Rust formatting aside, let's get back to modules. So from time to time, you're gonna want some code that someone else has written in a different package, completely different crate, different package and everything. So for example, there's a crate called Chrono that does some really cool things about time and date. So let's say we wanted to say something like printing, give us the time. And then that is a function that does something like this, the current date time is and i'll explain a little a bit of this syntax in future videos but just it's sort of intuitive it's going to print something in place of where these braces are and i'm going to type chrono local now and i'm not going to explain too much about what this is suffice to say that now is a function within the local module within the chrono package that tells us what the current date and time is, and then when we substitute it in place of these braces, it formats it. 
right? Now, if I save now, it's going to say, don't know what chrono is, right? Here's where we're going to pull in an actual dependency, another package that we didn't write that's just available online. In your cargo toml file, type in chrono equals 0 0.1. Now, I'm going to do another aside here to pull in another integration with Visual Studio Code that I find useful, and that's called crates. I'm going to pull that in. Close that up, and you'll see, if you play around with this number, you'll start to see that it does know about certain versions, right? So there is no 0 0.5, but there's a 0 0.4. So the plugin is kind of cool in that it goes online and finds out what versions of different other crates are out there and tells you if you're up to date or not. So I didn't have to look up that Chrono was currently at version 0 0.4. So you haven't guessed it. The simple format is you say what other package you depend on and then equals and then what version of that package. Generally, you want to keep the version up to date. You don't have to list out the version number completely. If you say 0 0.4, for example, if there's a 0 0.4.20 or 0.21, you'll automatically get that whenever you run a cargo update. So now we have resolved that dependency. We can call Chrono and look, our red squiggly is gone. When I run Cargo Run, it's compiling a little bit more because now it's pulling in that Chrono dependency, right? And it worked. So we have it actually constructing the date and time. That's the date and time of when I actually recorded this and formatting it and printing out nicely. So one final thing in this video I want to cover is the fact that you can have modules not only have modules inside of them so they can nest, you can also move modules out to other files, which is very convenient for code organization. So you don't have one long main.rs file with everything in it. So, for example, we can put printing into its own submodule, like time stuff. Right? Now, to do that, we would have to then say time stuff here. So intuitively, you can see that as things nest further, you have to have more levels of, uh, in your path, so, so to speak. So it says the module itself is private. So we have to say public module, right? Good enough. So I don't even have to run it to know that it'll work because our Rust analyzer told us about the problems that we had. Now let's do a little bit of breaking this up between files. So the way this works is every level of module can be a, a corresponded to your file system. So if we wanted to put time stuff in its own file, it would, there would be a time stuff.rs somewhere under a directory called printing. Does that kind of make intuitive sense, I hope? So we would make a directory called printing, and in that we would make a file called time stuff.rs. And then that's where we would move this stuff. So we would just cut it out there and paste it here. Back in main.rs, we remove these braces. And it should just work. All right. Now, names are malleable in Rust through aliasing. So let's say we didn't want to have to say printing time stuff. We just wanted to to be able to say printing. And furthermore, let's, well, let's do this one step at a time, right? So printing time, so this won't work unless we do an alias, so, or an import, some people like to call it. So we would say, we declare an alias or an import by doing the use. Basically, we would say use time stuff, give us the time, and probably I need to mark it as public again. Now, we've taken the give us the time from time stuff and pulled it into the printing module directly so that it looks as if we declared it there. Now, the final step I want to show is renaming. So let's say you didn't want to call, us, call it give us the time. We want to call it, say, like, announce time. We can just take this new name and put it after an as when we do the import or the aliasing. So now we've taken the original function give us the time inside of this sub-module time stuff, and we've renamed it as announce time and made it public so that it looks like it's called announce time inside of the printing module. So this is all about organization. 
So different aspects of organization are you might want to split modules up into submodules. You might want to limit what gets uh, made public, and you might want to change the names around so that at the out, outer public interface of your module, like printing, you want to um, give names that are independent to what you might be calling them internally. So Rust is really cool with that, and you can do all sorts of aliasing and organizational tricks like this. Hope that makes sense. So in this video, learn about what functions were, how to break functions up into modules, how to organize modules, how to use module aliasing. And we also pulled in our first dependency from the outside world. I didn't explain too much about that, but uh, we'll get into that in later videos or you can explore on your own. But I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, we're gonna cover types and how Rust handles data. So I hope you'll check out the next video when it becomes available if it's not already. And thank you for watching.